Hello everyone, this is Mr. Darius again, your business teacher, and today's business spiel is about production methods. How do we know which production method is suitable for our business? Now, this is a very tricky question. And in order to be able to identify which production method is actually suitable for us, we have to look in our own backyard and identify the following factors that are crucial for when we're taking this decision. So a production method will definitely be in influenced by the volume that we are trying to produce, by the industry in which we are activating, by the nature of the product, Okay, so nature of product, it's not the same thing to do uh, a diesel or petrol as it is to do tomatoes or to make plastic cans, okay? And the level of skills and expertise of our employees, and last but not least, because everything comes to money, is the capital that you have at disposal for investment. Okay, so now that we looked in our own yard and we understood which is the volume that we want to make, the industry, what's the nature of our product, we looked at our employees, we tested their skills, we know what experience they have, and now we also looked in our finance, we know what capital have, we can choose from the following possibilities. So number one would be job production. Okay, number two would be batch production. Number three would be flow production. Okay, and derived from number three and having a lot of roots in number three would be 3.2 to say so, and uh, this would be 3.1, mass customization. Okay, good. So let's discuss about each taking in consideration their advantages and their disadvantages, of course, and see what they have to bring to the table. Now, job production, I want you to think of a painter or a tailor, okay? What does it mean? It means that we don't move from the first stage of production until we actually finish this job. This has to do with tailored or personalized goods. And it involves highly skilled labor and it usually involves premium product. So, until the painter finishes the painting that was ordered or the tailor, the actual suit that was ordered to be customized and actually fit that client, he or she does not move to another task. And that is why the advantages and disadvantages of this type of producing, the, this way of producing art. So a huge advantage, a huge plus would be the fact that it is a lot of added value, okay? Because you're looking at premium products, you're looking at very tailored, very specialized, very um, custom-made products, so that means higher added value. So a strong added value margin, which we know from previous videos, that can mean a significant profit, okay? Another advantage when it comes to uh, this type of, this method of production is that you are actually swimming with your products in a high-end market. Okay? 
okay? And because it's a premium product, it will enable you, and a high quality product, it will enable you to have high prices, okay? And last but not least, it is very rewarding, okay, for the employees. Rewarding and satisfying for the employees because they have new projects, they have new challenges, they meet new clients, each, each project is kind of unique and they get to, you know, um, experience each, each project that they're working on differently and this is a huge motivator, a, a strong motivator for our uh, employees. Now the downside, it is that it's time consuming. Okay, and there's a lot of time with discussing with the clients, choosing the right colors for the paint, uh, for the paint, you know, just waiting for the proper light uh, to be um, to be there until we make the painting. You know, choosing the fabric for the suit, choosing uh, the colors, discussing with the client, taking measures. So it does take uh, time. Now it is also an expensive. process, meaning that not a lot of people will afford actually to buy products from you. So you will not be able to make this affordable as in volumes because it's time consuming and it's expensive. But then again, they both compensate for the fact that you have a huge added value at your um, product. And last but not least, you have labor intensive, okay? So your labor intensive, that shouldn't be a problem, but the fact is that your labor is highly skilled and highly specialized and experienced, and this will mean higher wages for you. So you'll have to pay them better because they're specialized and because they're experienced. Now, moving forward to batch production, when it comes to batch production, you should think of the food industry. Okay? And this is very characteristic. If you're a foodie person like I am, you're definitely gonna be, have no problem to identify the batch production method that you're gonna see around different places that you go. So, this has to do very much with switching from one stage of production to a different stage of production. So it allows you to produce in bulk by moving from stage one, so one stage, to another stage. Okay? It involves, it involves machinery, okay? Although it's kind of standard, And it involves division of labor. And I'm gonna explain over here what does division of labor mean. It means that my employees are each specialized in one process from the entire project, okay? I have an employee that is specialized in mixing flour, yeast, salt, and water. I have another employee that is specialized in giving the shape of the dough that is proper to just go in the oven to be, become a loaf of bread. And I have another employee that is specialized in baking that dough so that it becomes the delicious bread that we're eating daily. This is what division of labor means, okay? <clears throat> As a result, the advantages of such a production method are that, of course, volume, you are able to produce in higher quantities. Then again, you have flexible production. And I want you here to think of the same oven that is able to cook bread and afterwards croissants and afterwards muffins, and afterwards strudels. So this is very, very good for your product portfolio, especially uh, if you're having um, a bakery. Now, since we have division of labor, this means that you know, our workers are more specialized. And since they are more specialized, each in his or her own task, that means that they are supposed to be much more efficient. 
okay and last but not least it would be uh, important for us to discuss the fact that you are able with this um, production method to actually think of an output that is pretty much standardized so output is pretty much standardized okay so since it's standardized I mean just imagine that if you have a bulk of 20 breads coming out of the oven they will most probably look very very similar okay now the downside is that it is extremely repetitive which can demotivate workers can you imagine spending eight hours a day doing just those or you know loaves of bread now that can be you know really demotivated it has downtime involved what is downtime involved you have after you finish one stage of production so you make the loaves of bread if you want to switch to croissants you have to wait you have to clean the oven you have to set the temperature you have to make the spacing proper for croissants so this takes time and there's also the danger of delay I mean if the worker in the first stage of production the one that's making the dough doesn't finish on time and has delays it delays the entire production process the one that actually bakes the bread won't be able to make the bread and this means lower production or lower efficiency for you and this can mean lower sales and eventually lower profit now moving forward we go to flow production and in flow production there is a keyword because it's also known as mass production okay and the keyword is continuous production okay now the product moves from one stage of uh, production to another stage of production as fast as it is done the product doesn't have to wait like in the case of batch production for the other 19 breads in the 20 batch before it actually goes in the oven and it is being baked okay so once a coca-cola bottle is filled with juice it doesn't wait for the other bottles to be filled with juice it just goes directly to the next stage being labeled being bottled and being shipped towards our houses so we can enjoy it for um, for Christmas okay and this has the advantage of enabling a company to produce in extremely big volumes okay and as a result you get to enjoy economies of scale and we know from previous videos that here we will evolve better managers uh, uh, better access to uh, finance with lower interest rates and will evolve lower marketing costs it will involve special discounts for your from your suppliers and will also involve access to better technology uh, in addition, you will have a very standardized, a very, very standardized, um, to say so, quality. All Samsung TVs will look alike once they come out of, out of the production line. They will have the same functionality and they will have the same design, okay? And since it, it is capital, intensive and this is something that we already know from other videos eh, we will have very low labor costs okay so these would be the advantages of um, flow production or mass production as it's also called but the disadvantages is that setup costs you know just skyrocket so not everybody can afford it okay and again you have no flexibility you can forget about the model of using the same machinery to produce strudels and croissants although you're right now you're making loaves of bread here you're unable to make chocolate bars with a production line that is specialized in making coca-cola so there's no chance of doing this um, 
with the, uh, the flow production. And if you thought that this is repetitive, this is repetitive, even worse. So we put it as a square root because if here you have the <laughs> possibility of, you know, just uh, cleaning the oven, uh, you know, preparing it for the next batch, programming it and doing stuff that doesn't have to do necessarily with the dough that you're making all the time and you get to switch a bit, here you have no chance of actually uh, switching. Now, taking into consideration the advantages and the characteristics of flow production, big players such as Samsung, such as Apple, such as Toyota nowadays, such as Volkswagen nowadays, uh, have understood the idea of mass customization. And what does mass customization mean? So mass customization is about producing, so having a production line with skilled combined with skilled employees and experienced um, skilled and experienced employees and the latest technology such as we discussed previously computer aided design computer integrated manufacturing computer aided manufacturing and all this is used in a way to make a standard product become appealing to a certain group okay otherwise said you should think of selling unique way unique sorry selling unique goods or let's think about it this way. This can be seen as selling unique goods at a larger scale. And I'm gonna give you the example of the iPhone. Not long ago, there was only one iPhone with one camera, with one type of memory capacity in one color, and in one design but nowadays making unique goods a larger scale the strategy of having a standard product such as the iPhone and making more appealing to youngsters or making more appealing to businessmen uh, or making more appealing to I don't know um, clients that are interested in fashion has led to the result that we have a standard product that is now in red silver black and gold and has one two or three cameras has one or two or four processors has uh, one or two sizes and so on and so forth so that this way you are able to gain more money more revenue for a very uh, so the same product that you're focusing it you're just tailoring a bit so you get more money from your actual clients because when clients feel special when they get the tendency to look at a product and identify with it because it, it is a bit personalized uh, according to their character they will pay extra for it so these being said just taking in, in consideration that when you choose your production method one of these four that we discussed over here it's all about looking in your own backyard what volume you want to produce in which industry you're activating what kind of product you're aiming to do uh, what kind of people you have around you with what skills that can help you to do that and what capital you have to invest and this is the way in which you will choose from job batch flow or mass customization okay this being said this is mr darius thank you for watching this video and don't forget if you have any business query just drop me a line and i'll help you pull it through thank you